can't you can't get away from it you want to talk about autism and special interests <laughs> there's nothing you can do the trains are coming for you <sighs> i was gonna say something really controversial i don't know whether to say it i did a post on my community tab asking for you to send in your special interests and you delivered. <laughs> there were a lot of special interests. I didn't tell you why. Because today I've decided I'm gonna tear rank them and they're all here in this little red bin. Don't ask me why. Why do you have a mini red bin? I don't really know. I can't remember, <laughs> but I do. And it's, uh, as you can see, full of interests, which I have not seen. I did my best. I saw a few, but I did my best not to look at what you posted on the community tab. And my husband very kindly sat with scissors for an hour or so and put them inside this here red bin. And yeah. I'm gonna tear rank them. First of all, obviously want a disclaimer, but I'm not being entirely serious in this video. It's just a little bit of fun. Like I said in my video about autistic special interests are not what you think. Autistic special interests can be anything. There's no particular topics that are kind of more autistic. We can be interested in absolutely anything. It's more just the intensity of focus. We'll kind of prove that point today because I feel like it's probably gonna be all over the place. I don't know. You're allowed to be interested in whatever you want to be and that's fine. Let me just say that here for sure. I kind of made some train related jokes in my other video and some people got a bit upset. It's unreliable. It's not there when you want it to be there on time. It's an, it's an autistic nightmare. It's noisy. There's lots of people. Yeah, but some people came through in the comments and they explained hard why they were interested in trains and I, you know what, I kind of got it. So thank you for that. I was just joking. Sometimes my sense of humor is a bit silly. But I'm going to be joking some more in this video. It's all going to be a little bit of fun and feel free to disagree with me in the comments and let's have a war over special interests. I'm sure there are things that I love that you think what an absolute waste of time, you stupid woman. The top tier is do it all day. We wanna hyper-focus on this, we wanna fixate on it. This needs to be our life, this is perfection. Number two, it's a fun time. You know, we could dabble a little bit. We could have a fixation for maybe a month or so. It, tier three is, I get it. I can't personally at this point in my life imagine indulging in it, but you know, never say never. Then four, we have interesting with three dots after it. Yeah, I mean, I'll listen to you talk to me or at me about it. That's cool. I can't really get it myself, but to each their own. And then number five is never, you're going to jail. <laughs> Why? <laughs> but you're still allowed to be interested in whatever you're interested in. As long as you're not harming anyone else, and you're not harming yourself, do whatever the hell you want. You ready? <laughs> I just got a glimpse of one. Okay, I'm gonna have to do that one first. Oh no. <laughs> This is where I get cancelled. This is trains. <laughs> I'm having to not look. I just opened it, I took the lid off and it was just looking up at me. <laughs> you can't, you can't get away from it. You want to talk about autism and special interests. <laughs> There's nothing you can do. The trains are coming for you. Trains. <laughs> I did say people explained it really well. There's some really beautiful, like poetic descriptions of why people love trains so much. Basically, I was complaining about the public transport system in the UK, which if you're outside of London, expensive, not great, not great, smelly. But people were talking about how they like it from a sensory perspective, like being in motion. And I can relate to that feeling. I definitely can relate to that feeling. There's a lot of other sensory stuff I don't like on trains. Environmentally, you know, trains are good. I did used to like Thomas as a child. I dabbled in it. People say they often aren't quite interested in like the systems around trains. There were so many different reasons why people love trains. Like there were no two answers that were exactly the same. And I think that was pretty cool. So I think I'm gonna say I get it. I think I get it now. Okay, I promise this is not just me feeling pressured into giving this answer. I think I kind of get it. Like, yeah, the model trains, anything being small, I could probably imagine a life where I could get into that. A good steam train, like, yeah. It's a stereotype for a reason, you know? It's a solid interest. Go for it. This is quite a large, chunky, substantial interest here. Taylor Swift! <laughs> ah! Okay, um, <laughs> I feel like I've spent a lot of my life in denial. <laughs> that Taylor Swift is a special interest for me. But I'm ready to come out today. <laughs> I've got a bloody sparkling guitar behind my head. I've been a fan of Taylor Swift since I heard Love Story, since Fearless. And I went to Fearless tour and I went to Speak Now tour. I didn't go to Red tour because she only did it in London and I was too poor. And then I didn't go to any after that because I wasn't a super big fan of her pop albums. I still know every single word to every single song. So yes, I know every single word to every single song. I know a lot of people who have special interests in celebrities, they go super hard into like learning learning about their lives. And I do know, you know, a little bit of Taylor Swift trivia. I could probably pass an online quiz about Taylor Swift's personal life. I feel like I more have a special interest in her songs and in learning every single word and knowing what every instrument is gonna do at every moment and analyzing the Taylor's versions to see if they're exactly the same. <gasps> I'm gonna have to put this in do it all day. This is, this is top tier. 
yes go for it she's got so many songs if you just know shake it off and like the you know kind of more commercial ones no you need to dive into folklore and ever more you need to go back to her back catalog she is an incredible songwriter we're going for another one spreadsheets and graphs <laughs> Just, just any graph, any graph, any spreadsheet with anything on it, just just give it to me. Is that how we're feeling? Like, I don't know. I feel like I need more information about this. I feel like I'm gonna sneeze. My body is just rejecting this one. <laughs> People used to laugh at my sneezes because they're always really like small and high pitched. Who has a special interest in hay fever? There'll be somebody here. I know there will be. Spreadsheets and graphs. Um, I mean, I do like organizing things. I do often make spreadsheets in my own life. I like a budget. I like being obsessive about every fine detail. My spreadsheets are messy as hell and there are so many things that I probably do in a really inefficient way because I don't know all the best formulas and blah -de blah Graphs, I feel like I have a problem with processing graphs. I feel like I am slow. I feel like with being detail focused, I don't know if any other autistic people feel like this, I've got to like really consciously look at all the different elements of the graph and then eventually I can piece together the big picture. But I tend to not look at something and just immediately like, oh yeah, I know what exactly that means, you know. I feel like I want to say interesting. It's not never because, you know, I appreciate information. You can get a lot of information across in a graph. I respect it. I would listen to you talk to me about it if you want to monologue about graphs. You know what, I'd kind of be intrigued, but I don't think I get it. I think you're maybe on a different wavelength to me a little. And that's okay, that's okay. And I still wanna talk to you. We can still be friends, you know? Oh, this is a really small one. Pokemon breeding. Pokemon breeding. I feel like I need to, what does that mean? I need to Google it. A Pokemon in general, I just didn't really get into it. I have a Pikachu teddy that I had from when I was small. I know like Pikachu's the most like basic biatch Pokemon you can get. So sorry for saying that out loud. Remember when there was like that app where you could, what is it still exist? Some people probably still, still do it. We could go around searching for Pokemons. What was it called? I don't know, I didn't have it. But my dad who cannot use technology, who never really gets into things like that, just became absolutely obsessed with it and would like drag his whole family out to try and find these Pokemons. It was the weirdest thing and so out of character. Pokemon breeding. I mean, is it like, I used to like Tamagotchis and you could, you know, put them together if you had numerous to breed. Is it similar to that? I'm gonna have to Google it. I'm a bit scared of what's gonna come out. Pokemon breeding is a method of obtaining a new Pokemon by producing and hatching an egg. In the anime, it also refers to Pokemon grooming and caretaking. Okay, the basics. Breeding occurs at the Pokemon daycare. If two compatible Pokemon are left with the daycare lady, they will produce an egg. I don't know how to feel. The games are purposely vague about how this happens. My mum was kind of a bit offended by the whole Tamagotchi thing because it would like come up with love when you put them together with a question mark and she was like, mm. it's a bit suggestive, she thought. I can see that. I was into Neopets, I was into Tamagotchi, I was into Sims. I'm gonna say I get it. I don't know if I get exactly what Pokemon breeding is, but from the small grasp that I have, I think I get it. We haven't had an ever so far. Nothing's been too offensive. Let's see if this is the moment where it all goes wrong. Okay, this is really, really long. Statistics of events in brackets. Wondering how many times other people have thought the same thought I'm thinking in the moment. This sounds like something that I would think about and overthink about for sure. How do you know that though? How do you acquire that information? That's what I wanna know. Like surely that's where that ends at that thought. Like there's nothing you can do. Does anyone else feel like they sometimes want a Google of like ultimate truth? Or like Google things that might happen in the future, like mm, which of these two options would I enjoy more if I had experienced them both? Uh, I wanna say, do I get it? Do I get it? Do I get it? Do I get it as an interest? I suppose it's something you could certainly fixate on thinking about it. Um, I'm gonna say interesting because I actually do want to hear more about it. I am actually genuinely interested in it. That one was a hard one to categorize. I feel like I need to talk to you for a while. I need to give you an interview. Oh, two were tying up together. Okay, I'll pretend I didn't see one of them. YouTubers is another one. For sure, I can definitely fixate on one YouTuber for a while. At the moment, I'm coming on to what I said before about Taylor Swift. Swiftologist, a YouTube channel where this guy gives his opinions about Taylor Swift. I think it's the same age as me. You know, we've been in it for a similar length of time and usually it's all just like everyone cries and goes on about how everything Taylor Swift does is incredible, but he's a little bit more critical and I often agree with his opinions and it's quite nice, it's quite refreshing. Sometimes I don't agree, but it's still it's still refreshing to hear people speak openly without just pure fangirling all the time. I'm going down a rabbit hole. Once I get stuck on someone's voice, it's like, yes, I'm gonna listen to everything you've made to death. I also love Unnatural Vegans YouTube channel. She talks about veganism, but 
but from like a more logical standpoint and she talks about other things to do with ethics and morality. I really feel like we're on the same wavelength about a lot of things. Should I say a fun time? A fun time or is it do it all day? I prefer creating stuff to watching stuff but obviously watching stuff fuels the creation of stuff. I'm gonna put it in a fun time just below Taylor Swift watching other people talk about Taylor Swift on YouTube. Da, 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 da. Alternative names for friends. I'm assuming this means for your friends not for like friends the TV show because I know that's kind of a common <laughs> common interest. So like you have a friend and is it like nicknames or you're just thinking about what they look like they should be called? Like sometimes you're like, oh no, Janet, you really look like a Mary. That's kind of interesting. I feel like I could have done this as a child a bit actually. Like I'd look at someone and I think about whether they looked like their name and like what other names maybe they could have had. Actually, this sounds like a kind of daydream that I feel like I can remember having. I'm gonna say, do I say I get it? I feel like I'd do it if I had nothing else to do and my brain was like, I'm bored, da, 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 da. let me, you know, think about something and pretend I'm not at school right now because I really don't want to be. I don't know if I'd want to come home and then be like, you know, getting up a spreadsheet and writing down a list of all the names I thought my friends could have been called. I'm not even sure if I'm interpreting this right. I don't know, I feel like this is in the middle of I get it and interesting. I'm gonna put it in interesting. We're gonna be ruthless here today. Again, I am actually interested and would like to hear you monologue about it a bit. Hello. Maybe that's how conversations should be. You just take turns to monologue. There's a signal for when the turn is over. That would be so nice, you know? Like just get rid of the uncertainty in social stuff. Love it. Great idea. Right, I have no idea what this word means and it's been cut out really badly. And this is coming from someone with dyspraxia who can't cut for crap, but this is appalling. It's absolutely appalling, Lewis. Morphophysiology. Right, going to get my phone again because you're all too clever for me. I often feel like that when I read the comments, I'm like, I feel like I've never spoken to a more like knowledgeable, probably knowledgeable about very niche things, but with everybody combined, it's like the most intelligent comment section <laughs> in the world. And I feel like I learned so much. The study of anatomy in its relation to function. The study of the biological interrelationship between form and physiological function. All right, why is the, one of the first things that come up morphophysiology of potato is one of the first things that comes up. In response to drought stress, paving the way forwards is the full name. Morphophysiology of potato in response to, I kind of want to read it, to drought stress, paving the way forwards. Cultivated potato, and then it has the bloody Latin name in brackets, is currently the third most important food crop in the world. I actually feel like I could get into reading that. I actually do. I might put that in, I get it. I actually kind of want to read about the bloody morphophysiology of potatoes now. So thank you, you might have just opened a can of worms there. I woke up in the morning once and I've had this article come up and it was about how in medieval times they used to have two sleeps and then they used to wake up for a period in the night and it was called The Watch. This historian had like a full on book about it and I was like, I need to get the audiobook of that. I need that in my life. I screenshotted it, I still need to do it. I still haven't done it, but like things like that, that is so interesting. I do think as I get older, I definitely find science and biology and stuff a lot more interesting than I used to when I was young. Meat eating dinosaurs is the next one. Oh, is it do it all day or is it a fun time? I've never myself had a special interest in dinosaurs, but I've always had an interest, a light interest in dinosaurs. And I, you know, in a parallel universe, maybe if I'd been a little boy and I'd been more exposed to dinosaurs, who knows? Who knows? I just, I love it. Even now, I love going to museums. I love collecting little toy dinosaurs with my son. I like watching dinosaur programs. I'm gonna put it in a fun time. And meat eating dinosaurs, they definitely are cooler. Even as a vegan, <laughs> I'm gonna say they are cooler. I think my favorite dinosaur, comment down below what your favorite dinosaur is, but I think my favorite might be Carnotaurus. Oh my gosh, I love Camp Cretaceous. That is an incredible show and I'm so glad I had a child so I watched it because otherwise I probably wouldn't have been exposed to it and I probably would have never known. I love it. The characters are so well fleshed out. It's way better than the films. It's brilliant. I love it. Anyway, Toro has really sold me on a good old Carnotaurus. And then there was that David Attenborough thing, I can't remember what it was called, with dinosaurs in it. And the Carnotaurus was doing its little mating dance thing with its little tiny arms and it was absolutely ridiculous. And I loved it, it was really cute. So I think Carnotaurus is probably my favorite dinosaur. Cause yeah, Toro, he's just, he's so bad that he's good. He's everyone's favorite villain. I didn't realize I was as into dinosaurs as I clearly am. They're just so cool. Like what is it about dinosaurs? I don't know. Cause they're real. It's like a mythical creature, but they existed. 
keep having to tell my son that dragons don't exist in the, at the moment. Every day he's like, mama, I never want to go to a castle. I never want to see a dragon. <laughs> I'm like, they don't exist. He doesn't believe me. Fantasy and science fiction on that note. <laughs> that was funny that I just pulled that one out. Fantasy and science fiction. <sighs> I was gonna say something really controversial. I don't know whether to say it. I really can't watch Lord of the Rings. I have watched the first one now, but I managed to get halfway through it to about the same point about three times and then just couldn't do it. And we had a friend who was super into it. When we used to live in like a student area, we all went into the shared house and we all sat on the sofa and we watched the extended edition and we watched it with another friend who hadn't seen it before who wasn't particularly interested and Jesus Christ we were like there on our phones looking up the length of it while it was on and it felt like being on a long haul flight I'm not gonna lie I like Harry Potter I am quite into Harry Potter I can definitely quote the first two films word for word unfortunately we don't want to talk about the author of that anymore if you haven't watched the contrapoints videos on jk rowling there's one called the witch trials of jk rowling which is super interesting super eye-opening for me and helped me to kind of understand the situation because i don't know i don't go on twitter <laughs> so i don't see these things fantasy in general mm, i like maggie steve Farter's books i loved game of thrones before you know the last season i can dabble in a bit of fantasy i don't like everything where it's like super black and white like these are the good guys they're gonna save the day and sometimes there can be a bit of an element of that sci-fi wise i watched the alien films with my stepdad when i was like in my early teens ish and i enjoyed them at the time i loved prometheus when i saw it i definitely don't hate it i've read some amount of sci-fi and fantasy mostly ya kind of stuff when i was super into that and when you know all the dystopian was coming out it's okay i can dabble in it so i'll say i get it i just i tend to prefer things that reflect real life more and sometimes fantasy things like game of thrones was like a great you know in terms of psychology and people and power and stuff that was that's why i loved that so much i think because it just even though it was fantasy it felt very real until the bloody end of it i just can't believe how much they trashed it i just i don't even want to talk about it, it makes me so sad urban design what is that is that like planning designing urban areas i assume I knew I was gonna be Googling a lot in this video. <laughs> Urban design is the design of towns and cities, streets and spaces. It is the collaborative and multidisciplinary process of shaping the physical setting for life, the art of making places. Oh, that sounds quite nice. I'm terrible with like, I feel like spatial awareness and like planning what to put in space and stuff. And I feel like engineering would be the thing that I would be worst at in the world, which is funny because a lot of autistic people are super good at that. Like Paul Mikalev from Autism From The Inside talks about he, how he was an engineer and like his brain is super suited for that. And it just shows how we're all so different because no, 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 no. I'm gonna put it in interesting. I don't know, I like to stay inside. Building on The Sims, building places was the least interesting bit for me. It's people, people are always it for me. Harry Potter in brackets despite JK Rowling. <laughs> it must be so hard when that's your special interest. Like, ah, I hate it. And it's like, I've had it in the past where I've met somebody famous who I like, and it just completely taints how you feel about their art. Even if you don't want it to, it's like, meh. Like, obviously it still influences it. Particularly with some of the themes of Harry Potter, it just feels like, oh, you didn't. You didn't really mean it, did you? You know, like, oh, Harry Potter. I don't know, it's very nostalgic for me because I watched it for the first time when I was like five or six years old and read all the books throughout my childhood and you know, was there for the cinema to see all the new films when they came out. That makes me probably biased, I, but I think it's a good story. It's a world that's really intricately mapped out. Ron is amazing, I think Ron's my favorite character. It is very, you know, good versus evil, good triumph. Like I said, I don't really like about some fantasy things. I don't know, there are some complex characters maybe I suppose and I'm gonna say I, I get it and I do like to quote things in day-to-day -day life and just suddenly say troll in the dungeon just on a regular basis fictional magic systems is the next one that's kind of similar I think it's incredible like kind of epic fantasy novels these worlds that people build up from scratch I don't think I could ever do that and I am quite interested in writing but I feel like the stuff that I write is it's just kind of reflecting real life and again about people I think it's incredible that people are able to do these things and I do think it's really cool I I get it I get it, I understand it. I feel you. I love reading. If someone told me I had to read fantasy books for the rest of my life and I couldn't read anything else, I'd be like, well, at least I can read, you know? I'd, I'd, I'd probably get into it and I'd probably be on board. Historical facts, someone said. I'm like, historical facts about what? That's vague, it depends what it is. Because you know, some periods of history are just dull. Like how many times in school did I have to learn about what started World War One? Can I tell you what started World War One? The arms race. There was some stuff that was, was just boring that we just, 
you know, we covered way too much in history. I do enjoy historical fiction quite a lot and historical non-fiction. I've read some pretty chunky books about both, usually set in different countries around the world. I find more interesting like other countries' history than I do English history, British history, Hilary Mantel, uh, the Wolf Hall trilogy I haven't touched yet but I've listened to A Place of Greater Sa Safety. How long is that audiobook? Long. I think it had to be split into two parts when I listened to it about the French Revolution. I don't know if I can remember that much about it, that many facts about it but I, I love Hilary Mantel's writing again. I love the way she writes people so that was kind of more of the pull I think but I did find it an interesting setting. Does anyone else feel like when they listen to audiobooks they don't retain as much information as they do when they read? I kind of feel a bit like that. I don't know, do I get it? Like if you were next to me and you were just rattling off some random facts, like I had this friend in high school, not gonna diagnose him with anything, but he used to constantly be like, right this is what happened with the, the Berlin Wall, this is the story, and he would try and explain to me the whole, you know, history of the Berlin Wall every single history lesson. We weren't doing it in history, I had nothing to do with it, he just was interested in it and start drawing out like, you know, diagrams to illustrate his point and that I, it would just become a stroke thing that I was like, I do not want to hear about this and he would just carry on rattling it off and he would also test me on capital cities. He well, it started off with us testing him because he was like, I know every capital city and then it became like, we learned it, me and this other girl who was on the table, we learned it through him because we tested him so many times so then we'd all have to be tested on it. I don't know where the actual history lesson was in this, I'm gonna say, am I gonna put you in interesting, like, I'll listen to you monologue, but like, hmm. Or am I gonna put it in, I get it. I'm gonna say I get it. Like, I have a lot of history teachers in my family. There is a pull towards it. Tea pots and tea. I like bird and blend tea. Like, I've been getting into, like, you know, teapots and making actual nice tea. Yeah, I, tea is very comforting. I can get it as long as I don't have caffeine in it because caffeine makes me someone you don't want to know. Teapots. I can understand why having a collection of teapots. You can get some really cool cute teapots. I just have one. It's just a clear one. It's kind of a funky pyramid-y kind of shape. What? I don't know about shapes. I don't feel like I need any more. I don't really have the space. I just kind of want to say I get it for every single one, damn it. I'm not savage enough. Like, um. You see, if you were talking to me about tea and teapots, I might be a bit like, do I really need to know this much about Oolong, you know? Hey, if you haven't read the book, The Tea Girl of Hummingbird Lane by Lisa C, I love Lisa C, recommend that. I don't know if you came with the book recommendations, but there you are, have one for free. I kind of get it, like if I walked into someone's house and they had a collection of cute teapots, I don't know if that's what you do. I get too many of them, damn it. Who would have thought it? Athletic shoes I just got, right? I'm sorry, no. <laughs> I have a friend who has so many bloody shoes. She sends me pictures and she's like, which color should I get? And I'm like, neither, you have too many. And I'm always really honest. <laughs> I remember she sent me one and I was like, that looks like the color of an airplane toilet. Like I stand by it, it did. <laughs> I'm gonna put like, never, never. It's bloody sweatshop, child labor. You don't need that many pairs of shoes. No, I mean, I'm not sure if you own them. Maybe you don't, maybe you just like to know about them. In which case that's the more ethical place to be. Anyway, not ju not trying to be holier than thou because I do, you know, lots of things that aren't ethical. You know, there are, there are lots of things I could do to improve myself, but still child labor. How dare you? Give me like some black boots any day. I'm not a trainer sort of person. No, cause that might mean I have to do some sports. No. The Romanovs. Okay, is this like, is it a Russian family? Something historical? I wouldn't say interesting. Like I'd, I'd wanna hear you talk about it and maybe, maybe I could get it. I'm not saying I couldn't, I'm not closed off to getting it, but right now I don't get it because I don't know a lot about them and what makes them interesting. But it sounds like something I could be, you know, chatting to my husband about and him not be interested at all. It, it does, to be honest. Da, 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 da. What was that tune? We've got a theme tune on our hands. Words with every vowel slash no vowel in them. What? That is kind of cool. That is kind of cool. I'm interested in words, but in a sense of like song lyrics or novels, you know, like piecing words together to make something that sounds nice rather than a like, I'm interested in words, like just words on their own. I can find that interesting, but only in the sense of like, then I'd be able to use those words to piece them together to write a nice poem. Do you know what I mean? Does that make sense? I don't think I'm entirely on the same page as like an interest in in words isolated on their own, separate from a sentence, you know? I'm gonna put that in interesting. I would, again, I, 
I'd be interested to see a list. Let me look it up, actually. I am interested. Words with every vowel. I feel like that's a really intelligent person. <laughs> I mean, most of these are, but I feel like that's a really intelligent person's special interest. It sounds like something my grandpa could uh, get behind, just saying. Oh my god, what even are these words? Those are weird words to look at. I'm looking at the words with, with every vowel. That is an experience. I will say it is doing something to my brain. And so we're gonna also search no vowel in them. I did ask for weird and wonderful. <gasps> Jim. Oh yeah. Okay, no, there is something quite visually appealing about looking at these words. I'm not gonna lie, but I can't imagine it ever being me, but I feel like I have too many in that I get it. So I'm gonna leave you an interesting. Track lists and set lists. So like track lists on albums and then set lists from gigs. I always like looking up the set list before I go to make sure I definitely know all the words and there aren't gonna be like some weird cover song that I'm not expecting. I like to know every word before I go to a concert. I'm very, I'd say lyrics are potentially a special interest for me. When I like a song, I basically like it until I've learnt every lyric and then I feel like I've milked the song for all it's worth. You know, I've sucked all the juice out of it. Track list, I do, I do find it satisfying when I can remember the exact order. I don't know if I, I don't think I'd be able to do it for every Taylor Swift album, but I'd be able to have a good guess. It would be cool if I could remember more. I kind of want to learn that now. I do like learning information in a sequence, feeling that there's an order and, and putting it there on my head. I can get it. Would I personally want to spend my time doing it? I mean, I'm not saying memorizing them. You're just interested in them. Are you interested in maybe like the organization of them, like the logic behind why did you choose to perform that song when you did or put that song there or that kind of thing? I need to know more information. So I'm going to put it in interesting. I am interested. You have piqued my interest. Right. I think we'll do a final three. Let's go. Rare genetic and neurological disorders. No, I can get behind that. This is what I mean. Later on in life, I found kind of a love for, for illness and biology. Not a love, you know what I mean? Not a love for it, but like, yeah, I, I, I do find it interesting. I, I am quite squeamish though. And lots of the time when you start looking into things, they want to show you photos and like sometimes like surgery photos. And there's just, mm, there's things I can't unsee, you know, in my open university course, I had a module that was like infectious diseases. You can picture like they're all coming back to me now. All the images that I saw that I didn't really want to see. I'm going to put it in, I get it. But like, I think in a way I'm kind of too squeamish that like I could never have actually done anything to do with medicine. But I, I can get being in, into medicine for sure. Moss, somebody has said. Who has said moss? Own up to it, please, in the comments. I know it's embarrassing, but no, it's fine. <laughs> moss, no. Never, absolutely. I just, I remember my sister-in-law did a geography degree and she had to like analyze soil and they did different soil types. Who cares? Who cares? I don't care. I know I said in another video about like maybe growing vegetables could have been a special interest for me in another, in another life. Probably not because you know what? I just, I don't care. Moss, you know, sometimes it can be nice to stand on. It can be spongy. I'll give it that, you know? What is that? Is there different types of moss? I'm sure there are. Moss breeding, labels and label makers. I kind of get that, I kind of get that. I kind of do. I don't know what, I don't know the context again. It's like no context special interest we've got going on here. What do you label? I li again, I like, yeah, organizing, categorizing stuff. Ooh, I can, I can kind of see the appeal. I can't imagine it being a special interest for me, like the label maker itself. Is that part of the interest? Like, I don't know what this means. Like, what do you do on a day-to-day -day basis? When you get home and you're like, I'm gonna do a bit of labeling, what does that mean? What does that entail for you? I feel like that has the potential to be like soothing organization. I'm gonna neaten up my life. I'm gaining some control here. This is pleasant or to be like, I'm just researching different label makers for hours and that sounds kind of like terrible. So I'm gonna put it in interesting. I need to know more about it. All right, final one, final one, final one. We started with trains. What are we ending with? Another small piece of paper. Filmmaking, my main special interest throughout my whole life, probably. Ah, well, I don't know if you could always call it filmmaking, but videography and video editing, making stuff that have video involved in it. Yeah, completely, do it all day, do it all day. Finally, is that only the second do it all day we've had? Taylor Swift, make a film about Taylor Swift if you want to be perfect. I actually, I used to film music videos that I would kind of lip sync along to popular songs and stuff. Often it was Taylor Swift music videos. <laughs> I just love it. I love making things. I love creating things from nothing. And yeah, thankfully some of my other family members seem to love using cameras as much as I do because that's why I've got so much home video footage. Yay, <laughs> thank you. I feel a little bit like maybe I put trains too high. Maybe trains are also an interesting. <laughs> I did go to a mini railway kind of thing with my son. That was really cute. Mini things are really cute. There's so many left in there. So if you want another one of these, 
please let me know. <laughs> that was really fun. I really enjoyed it. Thank you so much for all of your contributions. I like it when there's a bit more back and forth and it feels a bit more like, you know, I'm making something for you for you maybe I don't know like you're getting involved a bit more I like that that's a nice feeling you know I feel like people have really built like a little community here and I'm just like standing here talking nonsense and then <laughs> you know people are just so nice in the comments and there's lots of chatting back and forth it's just it's just really nice it's really nice to see and I feel like you've made a community and then you've made me part of it kind of thing I don't feel like I've done anything I've just put my stupid face on the internet, you know? Anyway, um, if you wanna watch another video about special interests, and there were a lot of different special interests listed out in the comments of that video as well, then I have one called Autistic Special Interests. I know what you think. You might enjoy that one. I went through a study that kind of was, it was very like gender binary, like, well, these were the boy, the most common boy interests and these were the most common girl interests. But it, you know, it might, it might be interesting to see there were differences, between genders and I kind of theorized why I thought that might be. I don't believe there's such a thing as boy autism and girl autism basically. I think, you know, we're all just autistic and we're all different. That is all. Let me know if you want to see another one of these. Bye. That was the weirdest bye ever. Bye. I don't know how to say bye normally now. Bye. <laughs> I'm really self-conscious in my own house. Bye.